uh, with Illinois Democratic Congressman Roger Christian Morthy. He is, of course, the ranking member on the China Select Committee. He was one of last night's uh, speakers as well. Congressman, always great to talk to you. Uh, just uh, give me a sense of what it was like in the room there last night. Uh, there certainly seem, seemed to be a lot of excitement watching it on television last night. But what was your reaction to the vice president's speech? Did she strike the right balance between reintroducing herself and her policies, but also hitting Donald Trump? She did. And I think that she also filled out her biography even more for people that may not be familiar with her background. I think talking, for instance, about her mother, uh, about how uh, it was like to grow up in the flats, as it were, um, in, in the Bay Area in California. Um, and, and also talking about the contrast between her and Donald Trump. And I think one of the, the best lines of the night, in my opinion, was when she talked about, you know, how reproductive freedoms were at risk and how, uh, you know, Donald Trump and his allies um, want to do X, Y, and Z extreme positions, take extreme positions uh, to further curtail abortion rights. And she said, simply put, they're out of their minds. And that's how a lot of people feel about the extreme positions that Donald Trump and the Republican Party have staked out on this issue. Uh, maybe expand on that a little bit, because it seemed at least, well, when President Biden was still at the top of the ticket, the Democratic message was kind of specifically focused on protecting democracy. It, it does seem as though the Harris campaign is expanding that a little bit and framing it as freedom more broadly, as you talk about these specific issues uh, and other uh, aspects uh, that Harris focused on in her speech last night. Is that purposeful? Uh, and, and do you think that that expands the map a little bit for her uh, to some of these voters that didn't seem happy with either candidate? until she got in the race? I think that it reframes the issue in a way that is very accessible to more people across the political spectrum, which is they don't want the government, you know, involved in these deeply personal decisions of theirs, whether it's reproductive freedom or other uh, intimate decisions. Um, and I think that uh, it brings more people into the fold in terms of uh, understanding why this election matters. I think people are already energized within our party. As you can see from last night, I was there. I've never seen the United Center so packed to the gills as it was. And, and now it's time to also mobilize independents and maybe even Republicans who would be willing to vote for her. And so talking about this freedom frame, as, a, as, as it were, I think is a very smart move on her part. She is an interesting position here, though, because she, she's talking a lot about the future. She is talking uh, about uh, the baton being passed to a new generation. But she is, as the acting vice president, still part of this current administration. Uh, how much does she need to differentiate herself uh, from the work of the Biden administration and, and outline her own policy proposals? Uh, but is there and should she kind of latch on to some of the things that the administration did accomplish over the past four years? Yes, and I think that she has been. I think whether it's with regard to, for instance, the Inflation Reduction Act and the $35 a month insulin, or whether it's, you know, helping to negotiate the price of 10 prescription drugs, which, by the way, cost the federal government $50 billion a year under Medicare Part D right now because they are not, uh, they have not been negotiated downwards as she and President Biden did, makes a lot of sense. At the same time, I think that she's going to be outlining you know, on certain issues where she might, um, you know, take a different position or help flesh out a, a, an agenda that hasn't yet been fully realized during the Biden term. But I think that she has that uh, leeway and latitude to do so uh, because she's her own person. And I think people understand that um, she is not necessarily going to do exactly the same thing that President Biden does, but build upon uh, the foundation of success that he has achieved in many different areas. She certainly addressed uh, the issue uh, in the Middle East, uh, directly talking about the war in Gaza. That has been a point of division within your party. Obviously, there were protesters outside unhappy uh, that they didn't feel as though they were getting a strong enough voice inside the room. Do you feel that the vice president went far enough in keeping the issue from depressing the vote in key places like the battleground of Michigan? I think so. I think that when she said she wants a ceasefire deal in return for hostages and also massive humanitarian aid coming into Gaza and 
as I have articulated with some others in Congress, that we must make sure that there's a two-state solution on the table, medium and, and, and in the long term. Um, I think that that was another strong signal to the vast majority of Democrats that she's in the right place on these issues. And, and by the way, I should just say, she sent a very strong message when she also said um, she's not going to tolerate uh, bow bowing down to tyrants, uh, whether it's Vladimir Putin or Kim Jong Un, or for that matter, you know, uh, allowing for nefarious activities to continue with regard to Iran or Hamas. And I think that those were all extremely important messages to send, not only to Democrats, not only to voters, but quite frankly to our adversaries as well. Do you think, though, that the Democratic Party perhaps made a mistake by not allowing uh, members of the uncommitted delegates to have a speaking slot, to, to have their voices heard throughout the course of this convention? No, there, there are 30 uncommitted delegates out of like 4,200, I think. I, I mean, I think it's like some uh, very, very small percentage. Um, and I think that uh, it made all the sense in the world to do the program as they did. Um, and for her to address this situation and the issue substantively as she did, and now we move forward. So, and you move forward with only 74 more days to go. Uh, it does feel as though she's still kind of living in this honeymoon. Uh, it, it's probably gonna get a lot tougher between now and election day. Where do you think she should focus her energy as you move toward election day? Well, I think she's gonna be in the battleground states a lot, including in, my, in our neighboring states of Michigan and Wisconsin, as you know, um, and I think she's going to be doing everything she can to, um, you know, explain to everyday ordinary people how her agenda relates to them. And, you know, how does she address the kitchen table topics and concerns that they have? I think the other thing that's going to happen, as you know, is there's going to be a debate on September 10th. So she's going to be spending time preparing for that. Um, I think it's going to be perhaps the most watched uh, debate up to this point. And I think uh, she's going to do very well. She's going to acquit herself very well. And uh, it's going to be much different than the, the last debate that we saw. All right, Congressman Roger Christian Morthy, I can tell you on behalf of the Capitol Hill Press Corps, we're at the stage of August recess where we're actually starting to miss you guys. So I hope you come back in, in the near future so we can chase you around the Capitol. But I appreciate being with you today. I, I, I didn't think you'd ever say that, but thank you. <laughs> and. Uh, by the way, I, I just have to say, I hope that all of you had your fill of deep dish pizza and all the uh, sumptuous fare in Chicago. We, we very much enjoyed having everybody. And what an amazing four days in Chicago and the weather. Well, it's the same as it is the rest of the year, but it was pretty perfect. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't in Chicago, but judging by my colleagues' Instagram posts, I think plenty of deep dish pizza was consumed. So I'm sure that they enjoyed it. <laughs> Congressman, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate it.